We have entered a pivotal point in the Voice campaign as the referendum approaches and both sides clarify their arguments. The Shadow Indigenous Australians Minister and prominent No campaigner Jacinta Price has taken to the stage yesterday at the National Press Club warning next month's vote will divide more than unify while also questioning the ongoing impact of British colonisation on Indigenous communities. Joining me live now is Father Frank Brennan. I'm so happy to have you in the studio, Father Frank because you were not a supporter of this model, um, but now you're getting uh, behind it. And I'll let you clarify. I don't want to put words into your mouth there. But first of all, I want to talk to you about this week. It's ugly. It, it feels awful and mm. predictably so. Yes. It's ugly and it was always going to be ugly, Laura, given the process that broke down. Uh, yes, I've always been a strong supporter of the principle of a voice in the Constitution. Why? because key Indigenous leaders said to us for so long that they thought that was the appropriate way by which they might be recognised in the Constitution. Yeah. For me, what was critical, Murray Gleeson, who was a very respected Chief Justice of Australia, was a key member of the Referendum Council, you might remember, back in 2017, gave a key speech in 2019, fully endorsed by Noel Pearson, which said, look, you first of all got to set up the voice so people can see it and hear it so they know what they're voting for. Yeah. But then more significantly in 2021, Noel Pearson, with all his intellectual heft, uh, gave a key speech at the National Museum where he said, what would our elders ask of us now for future generations? He said three things. Let's do the legislative drafting. Let's get the legislative model right for the voice. Let's do an exposure draft of the bill, as they did with same-sex marriage, and then let's settle the wording, that is, settle it with the Liberal, National and Labor parties. Now, sadly, when the Albanese government was elected, all of that as process was thrown out. And so, predictably, we've now got this complete mess. But I'm one of those Australians who says, well, look, whatever of the mess of process, which has resulted in what was predicted by many of us, can we get back to the principle, the idea of a voice in the Constitution recognising First Australians? If we don't do it now, when are we ever going to do it? And as I say, uh, not flippantly, if you can't get it done now, what's the guarantee that the political leadership of the country in one, five or ten years' time will be any better than the combination of Albanese and Dutton? Yeah. None of us can give that guarantee. This has been dragging on since 2007. Let's get it done. Yeah. That's my approach. And this is not your preferred uh, model, of course. You've said that for so long. But what is your view of these things now? And I have an Indigenous voice to Parliament, your book here, the third edition. Sure. And how have you uh, updated that? Because, look, uh, I say this... The wording, because, yeah. I've always said, could have been tightened. Yeah. And if the wording were tightened, I think it would have taken lead out of the saddlebags of the yes case mm. and it would have taken a lot of ammunition from the no case. But I lost out on that argument and Parliament decided, no, we're going to stick with this wording. So it was a crash or crash through approach to which I say, look, there may be some doubts and ambiguities, imperfections, but guess what? Nothing that comes out of Canberra is perfect. <laughs> Nothing. And, uh, Laura... I, being a Catholic priest, I actually believe nothing on this earth is perfect, uh, but you work with what you've got. So here we are, we Australians, we've got a choice on the 14th of October. Do I vote yes to something which may be imperfect in terms of process and wording, but at least gets recognition in terms that Indigenous leaders have asked for, namely a voice in the Constitution? Or do we say no, where... As one Aboriginal woman in Darwin recently said to me, we mightn't be across the detail, but if we wake up on that Sunday morning with the voters no, we'll know that we've been rejected once again by those who dispossessed and colonised us. And I, as a non-Aboriginal Australian, say, I think it's time to say yes. What do you think the consequences are of us waking up on the 15th of October and it being no? The consequences immediately for Aboriginal Australians will be devastating, uh, but I think if it is no, what we've got to do is learn the real lessons of what's gone on here. And let's 
name it for what it is. If it is no, it'll be the hubris of a new government that said, let's go for broke, we don't need to do the legislative design first, we don't need to get the opposition parties at the table, we'll just sit down and negotiate this confidentially with Aboriginal leaders. Well, if that works, it's a whole new way to amend the Australian Constitution. But let's remember, Laura, there have been 44 attempts to amend the Constitution, only eight have ever succeeded. The most successful Attorney General was Bob Ellicott. He said two rules. You've got to have all major parties on board. And second, you can't have any legal ambiguity or complexity. Why? Because you'll have retired High Court judges out there fighting with each other. What have we had? Nine months of that. What's that do for the punters? They say, look, hang on. We're not High Court judges. We just need to be able to make a decision in good conscience, yes or no. And what's your instinct? My instinct at the moment, I think it's been a very bad week for the yes case. And uh, I think it's time for people to say, well, look, to vote yes, you don't have to be convinced it's all perfect. You don't have to be convinced the process was perfect. You don't have to be convinced that Mr Albanese and Megan Davis and Noel Pearson have got everything absolutely right. Mm. There are some of us who say, look, there are imperfections there, but wouldn't we be better as a nation moving forward having said yes than no? My instincts, unless that group come aboard with yes, then, sadly, I think it'll be lost. And make no mistake, Labor's made 25 attempts to amend the Australian Constitution and failed 24 times. It's not a good record. Yeah, it's certainly not. Father Frank, it's a pleasure to talk to you. You thanks too. Thanks so much. And thanks for helping us to bring the temperature down a bit. I think We've it's got to bring the temperature week. down. Uh, we've got yeah. to respect each other. We've got to have civil discussion. I'm delighted this evening. I'll speak at a church event, 600 people. Louise Clegg for no, me for yes, where we can have a civil conversation of people who disagree. There's been far too little of that in Australia on this issue. Very well said indeed. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Father Frank Brennan there live in the studio. And his words are certainly words to live by, especially thinking over the next four weeks as you consider that question.